Alrighty folks, today I'm gonna to set a fire in my garage. and uh, some of the results that I can get out of it. So, what makes a rocket stove a rocket stove? So the idea of any rocket stove is to have a combustion chamber where we can see our fire is going nice and a little bit of coals going on in there. Uh, the air draws the fire inside. Uh, there's a riser pipe on the inside here. A uh, heat riser, I guess. It comes up to roughly about here, so there's a little bit of a gap. So all your heat comes from your heat chamber up your riser and it kind of spreads out and fills up this whole uh, this whole drum so you can uh, you can heat up your uh, your air and then you get radiant heat coming off of that and then as you can see our uh, a lot of the smoke and everything is exhausted straight outside part of my dirty window now the part that i didn't do with the uh, with this rocket stove is having an insulated barrier in between uh, my riser and this outer drum. We generally, would have like a, a vermiculite or ash or sand or something uh, that would really grab that heat and uh, absorb it, working as a really good insulated barrier. But right now, I don't have any of that. Uh, I did not cut the top off of this. I actually cut the bottom off of it, uh, so I could sit everything down over top. I ended up cutting a square out of the end here, uh, so I could fit down over top of my uh, concrete block. Very efficient because your fuel supply is like this right here. So you're not looking at a, a whole lot. So it's an extremely efficient way to heat up any kind of a space. So in, a, in, a, in an emergency situation where uh, you're looking at uh, getting some sort of heat and uh, you can't rely on electricity, uh, this is one efficient method of heating up any space that you're going to have to be living in. Uh, that being said, uh, let me show you a, a good way to get uh, some fire going. Because uh, there are different uh, different methods to uh, to start a fire, of course, and being that I have some sort of background in uh, outdoor survival, I'm uh, I'm not going to cheat and use a lighter. Uh, I'm going to show you a couple of different methods. So one of them is uh, a little interesting. Um, yeah, let's try that. So to understand how to get a fire working, we need to know that a fire requires three things to get going. You get a really good fire going. You need tinder, you need kindling, you need fuel. So I got uh, a little bit of fuel here. I got some. I got a couple of uh, sticks from, uh, from, some, from trees that I've been cutting down in my yard, so it's had, uh, had some time to dry since last year. So what we got, uh, I'm going to show you some basic methods of uh, okay, really good effective tinder uh, from just about anywhere. So these are called feather sticks for all you uh, bushcrafters uh, who are going to know this and you're going to say, well, that's not a bad looking feather stick. So uh, how do we get a feather stick? Basically, we're going to start, I guess, these are uh, some of the fuel. This is pretty much all the fuel that you're going to need to actually burn uh, in your, uh, your combustion chamber here. So, how are we going to get a feather stick? Well, I don't really have an axe, and this is a little bit uh, too much for an axe. So, I'm going to take my trusty more knife, very carefully, use my baton, and I'm going to split this wood. That's a good test for a good knife, by the way. If you can use that as a pry bar and it doesn't break, you do that to good knife. So that's basically what we're gonna do. Let's put this guy up so we can get some smaller pieces. Now we got, uh, this would actually make uh, for a far more effective kindling, so we need to break it down even more get something that's going to ignite 
very quickly. So, uh, one method, you can just get some shavings off of here, like so, because these will burn up very quickly once your wood is dry. Or, to get uh, a feather stick, all we're going to do, you're going to find a nice edge on your, on your stick, and just very lightly, Once you get this to work for you, it does take some practice. You're just going very lightly. That's the idea is you want to find all the edges on here and start carving them down. These days. Here we go, see if we can find an edge out of here. It looks pretty cold, so it shouldn't really matter. Been trained bushcrackers to know how to do this. Having done it more than ten times. But that's the idea. And do a little flick like that at the end. We get feather sticks. So other than that, let me gather up all these pieces. And we've got something that we can use to, fire, to start a fire with. Alternatively, since I promised I wasn't going to use a lighter, I'm going to show, I'm going to try this a couple of different ways. I want to see if this works. First, and what most bushcrafters are going to carry on it, on us at all times. Ferro rod. A ferro rod will do. It will give us a nice. This is actually this is two parts. There's the magnesium rod here where you can scrape flakes off to it, off of, and then you got your ferro rod, your ferro serum, which will create the spark, which will light your uh, either your magnesium or your 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 tinder source. So, look at that. First strike, we got fire. Yay for me. That is one very effective. Cock balls, always keep cock balls in your, in your pack. So you would put that in your combustion chamber, then you can start loading on your, your feather sticks. Uh, actually, what I like to do is put the feather, the feather sticks around uh, that, uh, that cock ball, and then it just kind of lights itself on its own. If you don't have those, but you are stuck in a position where the women folk are with you, yes, that's what it is. Because honestly, when you start looking at these, all you do, all you've got is cotton. Look at that. Kind of gross, but uh, gosh, is it going to work? Let's find out. Voila! Just like that. We got an instant fire starter on a rope. My better feather stick. Once you get that thing started, you want to keep that inside your combustion chamber. This will cause less smoke on the outside. I don't like smoke in my garage, it makes everything smell funny. Aside from that, take care. A little bit of wood. Kind of hear it roaring a little bit already.
the whole idea is this. I know how these things need to be built uh, properly, but the idea of this one is to show you uh, how, how minimalist we can get. Yeah, so I'm not getting as much heat out of this unit as I would want to, because it has to heat up a fair amount of space here. That's why I went with the big drum. So I can definitely feel the temperature difference from outside the garage to the inside of the garage, but I can still see my breath. So uh, after a couple of hours here, we're just not getting the output that, uh, that I was kind of hoping for. So I really think that uh, uh, that uh, insulated barrier inside that drum is uh, going to make a huge difference. Uh, plus the safety factor to note is that, uh, that the exhaust pipe going on the outside is warm to the touch but not hot so i think after several hours of a good fire going in here uh, that could potentially get hot enough to uh, maybe start scorching some uh, some of the wood inside your wall or anything so you want to make sure of that so i think a lot of that insulated barrier inside the drum is going to take away or keep a lot of that heat on the inside and not uh, not exhaust a lot of it out right now i've got a lot of heat exhaust going outside and i don't want that of course we want it on the inside so that's our first concept stole brought to you from Prepare for Emergency. Of course, uh, like I said, we went with a uh, very minimalist uh, setup here because we want to know what, uh, what we can get away with out in the, uh, in the real world in, in an emergency situation. So we know the system does actually work. I can feel the heat heat from here, but I should feel a lot more heat uh, than what I'm getting. So uh, again, that uh, insulated barrier uh, is going to go in there on the, on the second build. Uh, and we'll get some more video on, uh, on the actual building process uh, that we're, uh, we're going to undertake with that. So, uh, thanks for watching this one. Uh, give us a share and a like. Uh, feel free to subscribe. We'll, we can definitely use some subscribers. So we'll catch you next time. So that being said, uh, let's give this a, a shot. I'm going to show you some beautiful. <laughs> So to get a practical understanding of getting a fire going, we need to know that uh, fire requires three things. We need uh, kindle, <laughs> duh, yeah, that's, that's number two. Uh, when we start looking at these, all you, ugh, ugh, ugh. Oh, I need, I need a box to put this on. So that's our first concept store that we brought you from Prep Pepper pre 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 Pepper and Salt. So that's our first concept store brought to you from Prepare for Emergency uh, and a little bit from uh, Aqua Productions as well because uh, I also do that. Uh, a little bit of a fire starter there, but uh, that's I walk walk absolutely nothing. Oh yeah, we're getting the fire going. 